Good day and welcome back to Ed's Garage at Merton Hyundai. Today we are looking at the all new, brand new Ionic 5 preferred rear wheel drive. Uh, but yeah, let's go over some of the cool features on this vehicle and then take it for a spin and see how, see how it rides. So we're gonna start at the very front of the vehicle. Now, a lot of reviewers have commented on the completely bonkers styling of the Ionic 5. It is super futuristic, totally different from anything else on the road. And I'll show you a few reasons why that is. So starting at the very front of the Ionic 5, you'll notice we've got these really interesting headlights. Now they are an LED headlight uh, and high beam, of course. Uh, but what's really cool is just the sort of daytime running light they have around the outside. There's kind of a pixel look uh, to it. You can see the little squares in there. Don't mind the lines, guys. That doesn't actually happen in person. Uh, even on the side here, this is really cool little squares. Um, down here, you can see we've got the, uh, the turn signals and even the turn signal lens has these little square pixels. Looks really cool. Now the front end is very, very clean. Um, you'll notice there's no air curtain pass through because while well, this one doesn't really need it, the drag coefficient is incredibly good as it's only 0.288. Now that's not as good as the old Ionic, uh, but it's still significantly better than most subcompact SUVs. Now, if we look also down here at the front, you can see we've got these uh, little sort of active shutters. These will actually open up and close as needed. So if it needs to cool off the battery, it can open those shutters up. Uh, if we come around to the side here, you can see we've got huge aluminum alloy wheels. These are a 19-inch uh, aluminum alloy wheel, um, and they're kind of that arrow wheel shape. So this is all, it looks really interesting. Now, it's not as nice as the Ultimate, of course, but I think for a lower trim level, they do still look pretty cool. Now, the Ultimate, of course, will have 20-inch rims, so pretty nice. Now, on the lower trims, you can also see we don't really get that contrasting color in the wheel arches and the, the skirts and whatnot, uh, but you do still get those little sort of neat cut lines in the wheel arches, which looks kind of cool. Now, as far as the hood itself, you'll notice it actually doesn't separate at the fender. It's, it's part of the fender, which is quite unique. And it even comes all the way down to the very, very front of the vehicle. So it doesn't have that split line right there. So one piece covering the whole sort of front end. It looks really clean. Now let's pop this hood because there is a cool little surprise underneath. Now to pop the hood, you do need to go into the uh, cabin um, and pop the hood right in the same sort of place as usual on the, uh, on the sort of side of the footwell there. Uh, so that's a bit of a downside, but underneath the hood, there is actually a frunk, a front trunk. Now it's not the hugest thing in the world, uh, but it's enough storage for like your, uh, your charging cable or, uh, you know, maybe a first aid kit or whatnot. Um, but I will call Hyundai out on one thing here and that is this i'm not sure if you can see it i'm going to try the angle here and see what see what we can see but you'll notice if we look past the accessory battery it's actually let me squeeze in there it's actually quite a bit of space underneath <laughs> the front trunk let me see if i can get a better angle there look at all that space so hyundai What's going on? I mean, you had an opportunity to have a really big, deep front trunk on this rear wheel drive vehicle, and you didn't take advantage of that. That's, that's a little disappointing, but you know what? Maybe somebody will come up with a, uh, an aftermarket solution, uh, because yeah, it, it definitely goes down further than that. Now, also while we're underneath the hood, let's have a look at a couple other things. So you got your windshield washer fluid right up high, easy access. You've got your coolant, uh, for your electric motor and your battery. And this is kind of interesting. They're now two different colors uh, on older Hyundai's, uh, Hyundai electric vehicles. They're all the same color. Um, on the right-hand side is the accessory battery there. So we do still have an accessory battery. Uh, now I know a lot of you are probably yelling at the screen at this point, uh, at this, you know, saying, why do they still have an accessory battery? It's an electric car. Well, it's quite simple because the accessory battery is 12 volts. All of the electronics use 12 volts to actually take that very, very high voltage battery and try to reduce it down to 12 volts is just not very efficient. So it's actually better to just have a 12 volt battery in there. Um, right next to that battery, you see the fuse box and then we've got the, uh, the uh, uh, brake fluid right in the back there. Um, and also underneath the hood, you can see a lot of that structural adhesive usage. Again, uh, this will be a very, very safe vehicle. Uh, lots of uh, structural adhesive usage and lots of advanced high strength steel construction. Now, interestingly enough, different from the old Ionic and the Kona EV, there's no insulation in the hood. 
Now, it doesn't really need it because it doesn't have a gas engine making a whole bunch of noise, but I just noticed that uh, when I opened up the hood there. All right, so let's keep walking around the vehicle. Now, also, before I get too far here, it does have the forward-facing camera for the autonomous braking system and the lane keep assist function, uh, which we will go over a little bit later, but I didn't notice a forward-facing radar in here. Now, I'm pretty sure it does have one as it does have the adaptive uh, radar controlled cruise control. Um, the other thing I noticed as I was passing around is a little bump right on the light here. I'm guessing that's just for the aerodynamics. All right, so going up to the side mirrors, you do see the marker lights on the mirrors, which is pretty nice. They're also that sort of that pixel style, lots of little squares there. Um, you can see the uh, door handles are flush with the vehicle until you unlock the door. Now there's a couple ways of doing that. First off, of course, you can use the key fob. Now, if I hit the unlock button here, you'll notice the handles actually do pop out. Which looks pretty cool. But there's also a button on the handle right here. And again, it's a square, just like all the other little squares on the vehicle. And there we go. It goes back in as soon as you press it. So that's the proximity entry. Now, in regards to the key fob, in regard to the key fob, sorry, I keep adding an S. <laughs> I've got the lock, unlock, uh, the alarm, and then the remote start as well. Um, so to use that, you just lock the doors and then hold the bottom button until you see the lights flash and then it turns on. Now, the one other button on here is this guy here. Now, what that does, check this out. We hold that button. Boom, that opens up the charge door. So there's actually a button on the charge door, which I'll show you in a moment. And again, all squares because we got to keep that pixel theme going. Now, of course, this does have the fast charging architecture, DC fast charging. But get this. It's 800 volts DC fast charging. That's the fastest charging EV on the market today. Zero, or sorry, five to 80% charge in 18 minutes. That's phenomenal. Now also on here, there's the button right here to close it, but there's, and it's again, it's a square, but also on the outside, there's these five little squares that you can press to open it without using the key as well, as long as the doors are unlocked. I forgot to mention, these aren't just to look fancy, they actually do indicate the charge level. So if it's just the bottom light, then you're basically at zero to 25%, and then 25 to 50, 50 to 75, 75 to 100%. So that's what those, uh, those lights are for. All right, so let's look at the back of the Ionic 5. Now, again, you have these really cool sort of pixel tail lights. The inside lights are the brake lights, as well, of course, as the third brake light up here. Uh, they're also your turn signals. And then your backup lights are down here beside a couple of reflectors. So there is your brake lights there. And of course, your turn signal reverse. It looks like that. Now, generally, you can't actually have brake lights and turn signals on a movable hatch, which these ones are, but they were clever enough to put a second set there. Now you got Ionic 5 right in the back here, which looks quite nice. And what's really nice about this, this, um, this back end is you'll notice that the brake lights and turn signals here, they're underneath this sort of clear plastic and this, this little square sort of pixel thing actually goes all the way across. It looks really sharp. Down here, we've got the backup camera. Now, of course, the higher trim levels do have um, full surround camera, but uh, let's open up the hatch and have a look and see how much room we got back here. So it's about 540 liters of space with the seats up. I don't know the number for when the seat's down, I apologize, but let's have a look at what this all looks like. So we get a free cargo net, and of course, we got our charger cable. Now it's a level one cable. So Hyundai doesn't provide a level two cable because they know everybody has regular power outlets in their house. Not everybody has a 220 volt power outlet. So this is just gonna be a regular 120 port. Now, as you can see, it is quite a large trunk, but the, uh, the floor isn't quite the level of the bumper. Um, it's a little bit lower, but the floor actually does have a neat little trick. You can open it up and it's got a bit more storage underneath. And that's where we'll find our tire repair kit, uh, which is very securely Velcroed to the ground. <laughs> but uh, underneath here, there actually isn't really anything. It's just solid floor. But I want to show you real quick the uh, carpeting on here. Look at, the, look at the insulation on this. It's super thick. Now, this is just carpeting on the lower portion of the trunk floor, and it's nice and thick. So that's, of course, to reduce a little bit more road noise. And of course, the electric motor is underneath here as well. All right, now I folded down one of the seats. You can see it is quite flat. Um, so you could actually lay something in here quite large. It's uh, got a lot of room. Uh, but there is another little trick with the floor that I just found out. Check this out. So if I open up 
this bottom piece here and I lift it, I can actually stick it. There's these little sort of catches on either side there that hold the entire floor up. So it's really, really easy to get in to all of the stuff down here without having to take the whole floor out or hold it open or just fold it over or whatever. It's kind of stationary and it's not moving. It's kind of cool. And then of course we just put it back down, slide it back into place and it's closed just like that. Now on the right hand side here, you see there's a little nub. You got to pull it out. What this is for, that is actually the emergency release mechanism for the charge door, which of which is of course right on the opposite side of the fender there. All right, lastly, I wanna point out that again, Hyundai has done a great job with the hatch. It's high enough that, you know, I'm not gonna bang my head really. It touches a little bit right here, but I'm not gonna bang my head on the hatch uh, when I'm, you know, loading or unloading stuff in. I'm six foot two and that's important. I, I notice a lot of car companies for whatever reason just can't seem to get that right. Um, and there's a handle on the inside makes it easier to pull down. And then, yeah, once you whip it down, it kind of just closes. You don't have to push it down. So, all right, so I've gotten myself some distance away from the vehicle because there's actually, before I jump into the back, I want to show you a neat little quirk that uh, I didn't realize that this vehicle had until just recently. But you'll notice I've, I've remote started the vehicle. You can probably see the screen is on inside there. As I approach the vehicle now, it actually opens up the door handles for me and unlocks the vehicle. I didn't actually have to hit any buttons at all. It just recognized my proximity and immediately unlocked the vehicle. Now, it doesn't do that right away. If you lock the doors and kind of stand around for a bit, it, it doesn't actually set that up. It only sets it up after you've been away from the vehicle for a while, kind of like the smart trunk uh, on our older vehicles and including this vehicle as well. We'll also have smart trunk in the higher trim levels, um, but it doesn't doesn't function right away when you lock the doors and that's basically so that when you get out of the vehicle you lock the doors and you and you you know your plan is to head to the store uh, but you haven't kind of left the car yet it's not going to just suddenly unlock again it's going to wait for you to have been away from the vehicle for a while and then when you come back that then works and sets up pretty cool so i don't think any reviewers noticed that so far so i might be the first but pretty cool that it, it allowed me to to uh to quickly do that all right let's check into the uh the back seat space here now of course i still have the seat down um, and i wanted to point out it does lock in the seat just like our other vehicles so you do need to release it by pulling the little handle here and then you can flip the seat up just like that all right now you'll see it locks in at a pretty much a 90 degree angle and there is one other little trick with the seat I wanted to show you. Down here, there's a handle because you can actually slide the seats forwards and backwards. Um, I'll do that when I'm sitting in it. It's a little bit hard with one hand, uh, but that allows you to get a little bit more space in the back as well. All right, so I've set up the front seat for my driving position. Let's jump in the back. All right, now I've purposely left the front driving seat in the absolute most comfortable driving position for me. I'm six foot two, and I want to show you, I've actually got several inches of space in front of my knees still. So this vehicle has a ton of backseat space. This rivals some full-size sedans. Now, you'll see I've also got lots of room underneath the seat to put my feet. It's a nice flat floor all the way across. There's no uh, no hump in the middle, of course, uh, because there's no drive line going from the front to the back. So it's a nice flat floor all the way from the front console to the back seats. Now, of course, as I mentioned, you can also slide the seats forwards and backwards, just like that. It's a little handle on the bottom there, and they actually go really far up. Uh, and there's also a center cup holder armrest. Guys, I apologize if my, if my microphone's catching on anything. Uh, nice cushioned armrest. And then the doors themselves also have cushioned armrests as well in the higher trim levels. In the lower trim levels though, unfortunately it is just a solid plastic. Um, now the front armrest is cushioned. It's just the rear doors that aren't. But you'll notice there's no handle. It's just this entire length right here you can actually grab. So no matter how tall you are or how short you are, it's really easy to grab that door and close it. There is bottle holders in the doors as well and there's a lot of room there for other stuff. And in the back of the seats there is seat back pockets on both sides, front and uh, front passenger and driver. And then we also have illuminated USB ports. So when the car is running these actually do light up. It's very easy to see them. And then a little further down we've got a little bit of cubby hole there. Uh, it's a little bit more storage. And also even though this isn't the top trim, you get the B-pillar vents, which of course have lots of movement. You can open and close them as well. Uh, so that's quite nice. And a little light up here, which is LED. So no halogen light bulbs in here anymore. Also grab handles on all four corners. You can see even the driver has a grab handle. And then in the driver's side rear, you also have a little hook there uh, for coat hangers. 
Now, in regard to headroom in the back, well, you can see, I'm taking my toque off here, you can see I've got tons of headroom. I've got easily two and a half inches of uh, space above my head. Now, again, I'm six foot two. I'm sort of a half, half split. I'm not long torso or long legged, um, but there's lots of headroom. Now, I can recline this seat, as I was mentioning before. So if we start in the upright position, we can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, thir 13 positioned adjustments on the back seat. So if you are a back passenger, you can get comfortable. Pretty nice. All right, so I'm gonna jump in the front now. And before I do, I'm gonna remote start it again uh, because there is a cool feature that I'd like to show you here. Um, with the remote start, when you get in the car, you don't actually need to start the car again. Basically, you just jump in, put your foot on the brake, and everything comes to life, just like that. So no need to push the start button a second time or anything like that. All right, let's check out the driver's seat first. All right, so having a look at the driver's seat, you can see it is power. Now the passenger seat's manual, but the driver's seat has one, two, three, four, five, six, that's lumbar support, seven, eight, nine, 10 ways of power adjustability. Now in pictures of the Ionic, you could see that the, the uh, driver's seat would basically recline very, very far. Uh, so let's try that out real quick. I'm gonna recline it all the way. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm gonna lift up. Uh, that's already lifted up. So look at that, look at how far it goes. It actually goes all the way to the rear seat. So if you are charging and you wanna take a little nap, very, very comfortable. comfortable. Of course, the higher trim levels do also have the little Thing that comes up here is sort of the foot rest um, but you've also got lower back support as i mentioned and check this out in the seats you also have that little digital sort of pixel pattern again and they're a really nice cloth seat as a matter of fact they don't feel too rough they don't feel like sandpaper uh, like some other vehicles um, even even some hyundai vehicles but uh, this is a really nice cloth interior now as far as the door goes we have the controls for uh, of course your mirrors and everything um, it does have auto up and down on the driver's side just not the other three windows at least not in this trim level you do have the uh, child safety lock mechanism which not only does it lock out the windows it also immediately locks out the rear doors as well prevents them from being opened from the inside huge cup holder uh, or bottle holder pocket here lots of space well not huge it's 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 fairly large uh, lots of space for stuff in a, in a fairly decent sized bottle uh, just the standard sound in this one uh, nothing special about the audio system except of course for the infotainment screen which we'll go over in a little bit looking at the pedals in this one you do have a nice big comfortable dead pedal there nothing too special about the gas and brake though um, but they do have little plus and minus signs on them so there's a little minus sign right here you can barely see it uh, and there's also a plus sign on the there we go on the gas pedal now when we get into the vehicle you can see the bottom of the steering wheel is flat so pretty easy to get in and out of the vehicle i'm going to take my toque off i'm actually getting a little bit warm now it's kind of weird i started off this review and rather cold and now it's positively warming up it's not warm but it's warming up all right so as you can see i am very very comfortable i have lots of leg room lots and lots and lots and lots of headroom let's raise this seat up and see just how high it goes now, as you raise the seat, it does move forward. So I'm gonna be moving it back as we go as well. Yeah, so these seats really do move quite a bit. And that is straight up. So even straight up, I've got uh, about an inch and a half, maybe an inch above my head. Now, obviously I, I wouldn't drive like this because my, you know, my vision is, <laughs> is being obscured a little bit by the roof line. Uh, but for very tall people, you can still very comfortably drive this vehicle without any troubles. There's lots and lots of headroom and just a ton of legroom as well. Um, this is with the seat completely stretched out. And as you can see, uh, you know, my knees, my, my legs are, are pretty straightened out here. As a matter of fact, I can completely straighten out my left leg. Uh, the right one is in the way of the accelerator pedal there. Okay, now, now on my speedy review, I don't know if anybody watched that, but on my speedy review, I, I didn't find the under console storage uh, it didn't look like it had any but uh, in this review i was kind of learning the vehicle a little bit more and uh, realized that it, it does indeed have under console storage so basically there's a button 
right here that you press and that allows you to open up this. I don't know why I didn't see that the other day, but it has a little bit of under console storage, uh, center console storage. Now the center console does flip up as well. So you have a little bit of better access to this stuff down here. Um, but that's how that works. So kind of interesting. I didn't notice that. Now going on a little further with the center console, of course you do have two illuminated USB ports, a little bit extra storage underneath here as well. So lots of room there. Of course you got your dual cup holders. Now in the higher trim levels, again, you do have another option where you can move this whole console forwards and backwards. Uh, that is not an option in the preferred. Uh, we got another storage bucket down here and this huge open space. You'll notice the floor is completely flat, um, which is kind of cool. Another USB port there. Of course, that's for your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and a 12 volt power outlet. Um, a very, very large, look at this, lots of space in here. It's actually got a little sort of second cubby hole in the, uh, in the glove box door. And look at how far back it goes. So a huge glove box and it is lit up as well. As you can see, there's a light there. All right, so let's talk about buttons, switches, etc. So first off on the left-hand side, you got your dimmer switch. Of course, that's for all your interior lights. You got your e-brake, your auto hold. So auto hold just stops the vehicle from moving when you take your foot off the brake. Um, and then you can really use sort of one pedal driving, uh, but it does have eye pedal, which I'll get uh, go over a little bit later, especially on the test drive. You got your traction stability control button right there. And then looking at the steering wheel, you have the uh, drive modes here. Now the drive mode button, when you press that actually does change quite a few different things. So you can see it actually changes the, um, the view of the instrument cluster, uh, which again, we will go over a little bit later on, but you got eco, normal and sport. Eco of course will give you a little bit extra range. Uh, normal will um, be basically normal drive. Eco is a little bit sluggish. Um, and then sport mode is where you get uh, the most power um, but also the, uh, the range of course is going to drop. It also tightens up the steering wheel. Now, if you hold the drive mode button, it switches into snow mode, which will make the traction control a little bit more aggressive. Now, having a look at the turn signal stock, that is also your headlight stock. You do have automatic headlights. We always recommend keeping the headlights on the full on position. Uh, it will actually shut all the lights off when you turn off the vehicle. Um, you can see here we've got automatic, I don't know if you can read that, but it's automatic high beam. So if I turn the high beams on by pushing the stock, they will shut off if it detects that there's a car coming towards us or a car in front of us. You also have um, the one touch turn signal. So that's where the turn signal will stay on for a few flashes. You can put it on three, five or seven flashes. And then on the stock on the right, this of course is your windshield wiper washer stock. Nothing too special here, but it is a nice look. Um, one thing you will notice though, is that you can't twist the end. There's no rear window wiper. And the reason for that is this, you got this little air curtain pass through here, which actually redirects air over the rear window and just wipes the water away with air. Now it's not going to work as good as a windshield wiper. I don't think there's going to be any dispute about that. However, Having driven this now in the rain, I can tell you it does work pretty good. All right, now below the windshield wiper stock, you have the drive stock. Now this one doesn't move up and down or back and forth, it just twists. So if you twist it forwards, it goes forwards into drive. If you twist it backwards, it goes backwards into reverse. If you put it in the middle, it goes into neutral. And then if you push the end, it puts it into park. Now there is some automated function here. If you have the e-brake on, when you put the vehicle into drive or reverse, assuming your seatbelt is on and everything, it'll actually take the e-brake off for you. If you shut the vehicle off, it will put it into park for you automatically. And if you're in drive and you stop the vehicle and take off your seatbelt, it'll actually put it into park for you automatically as well. So that's the automated nature of that stock. Uh, looking over to the, you know what, we're actually gonna ignore that for a minute. We're gonna look at the steering wheel first. Now this is a fully heated steering wheel, which I'll show you the control for momentarily. Uh, but first off, I want to go over some of these buttons. Now these look like touch sensitive buttons, but they're not. You do actually need to push the physical plastic portion of it. What it does is it recognizes where your finger is, and then basically you can push it. Um, and then it's, it's one switch. Uh, so the entire thing moves. You can see we can actually move the entire thing like this. Now, if your finger is on the voice recognition, then obviously it'll be voice recognition. So that's how that works. It's partly touch sensitive, but partly physical push. So it just recognizes where your finger is, but you do get that nice sort of not haptic feedback, but that physical feedback uh, of pushing a button. So if I press this one here, Please say a 
there it is. And then I can push the little star to cancel. Now the star is actually a customizable button. You can actually choose whatever you want that to do. So if we hold that one down, uh, that'll bring us to the settings screen where we can then choose what we want that button to do. So we, we want it to re just reject end call. That's the simplest thing uh, for it to do. But you can also have it change your hands-free calling device. So if, if uh, you and your spouse are in the vehicle, and you both have uh, phones connected to the Bluetooth system, you can kind of switch between the two just by you know quickly pressing that button if that's what you want to use that for. Uh, you also have privacy mode, which deactivates the uh, system's ability to show basically your call history, favorites, messages, contacts, that sort of thing. Uh, you got voice memo, which you, where you can go and uh, store a, uh, a memo by voice and then play it back later. Uh, reroute just allows you to quickly reroute a navigation route. You can cancel the route with that button as well if you set it up to do that. Quiet mode. So I'll go over quiet mode in a bit as well. But those are all the different things you can choose for that button to do. Now there's also a custom button uh, for navigation. Um, and that's listed right here. So if we hold down this one, you're going to notice the screen now changes to this. Um, now, I always set this up for phone projection. I'm not sure why it has navigation listed in brackets there, because quite frankly, you can use it for things that are not navigation related, um, like the EV screen, the home screen, the radio screen, the Bluetooth audio screen, the phone screen, the setup screen, the blue link screen, the quiet mode. The, yeah. So again, I'm not sure why it says navigation. I guess maybe they they're calling this section the navigation section, navigating the screen section, I suppose. But it's not to do with the actual mapping system. And then there's the mode button on the steering wheel. Um, and that is right here. So you can choose which uh, audio sources that allows you to choose from. So right now everything's turned off. But if we know that we're going to listen to FM music and Sirius XM music and we like phone projection and Bluetooth audio, well now I can check those off and then when I hit this mode button I can cycle through those different sources um, but it won't actually cycle through the sources that are not available nor will it cycle through the sources that you have unchecked. Uh, so they have to be checked and they have to be available and then the mode button allows you to kind of go through and cycle through those sources of music. All right and then on the right hand side of the steering wheel uh, you have some controls for your your instrument cluster. So that's these two right here. So this top one allows you to change basically what's on the screen in the middle. Uh, you'll notice along the top edge here, we're kind of cycling through the different things. So we're going to go over those in a second. And then these ones, this one here allows you to go up and down through the individual menus on the screen. Uh, so if I choose this screen, for instance, if I go down one, it shows me something slightly different, which I'll go over again in a moment. Uh, below that, we and that's also an OK button. So the OK button is for like resetting things and entering into sub menus, that sort of thing. Uh, the button underneath is for the steering assist at low speeds. Uh, so when we enable that, you'll see that come up on the screen right there. And when it turns green, that means that the car can actually steer within the lanes to some degree. Um, and this one here is for the adaptive uh, adaptive cruise control system. So when we have the cruise control enabled, uh, you'll notice right now we can't actually set it, uh, but this will allow us to change the distance that we're following the car in front of us. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna try that on the test drive once we hit the highway. Um, on the back of the steering wheel, you have the paddle shifters here. Now these paddle shifters are not paddle shifters. They're actually regeneration levels. Uh, so if I put the vehicle into, let's go into, um, into drive here. All right. So we're now in drive. Okay. And I can see on the left hand side, our, we're in level one. Let me just zoom in a little bit there. So we're in level one. If I pull the left paddle, it increases to level two, then to level three, then to iPedal. Now iPedal allows us to drive basically completely independently uh, of the brake pedal. So when I release, see here, when I, when I push the uh, accelerator pedal, we're moving forward. When I release, we come to a stop. So essentially what that's doing is it's completely eliminating my need to ever press on the brakes unless there's an emergency in front of me, in which case I need to you know, brake faster. Uh, but as long as I'm keeping a proper distance behind the car in front of me, I can just drive with just the accelerator pedal the entire time. I'm going to try to do that on the, um, on the drive afterwards, but uh, I've never actually experienced it. I'm really excited to give it a shot. So uh, we'll see how that works out. Now on the right hand side of the steering wheel is the reduction um, of the, uh, the different levels. So you can actually reduce it all the way down to zero. So now we're in level zero regeneration uh, just by pushing that four times. So there's technically 
Uh, let's see, we got uh, level zero, so that's that's one. So level one, two, three, four, five. So there's essentially five different regeneration levels from zero all the way to full eye pedal. Okay, let's go over some of the other things here. So that was the regeneration paddles. Now on the steering wheel itself, you'll notice there's no H for Hyundai and there's no word for Ionic, just these four dots, which is kind of weird, right? But it's not because they're pixels and because this vehicle is sort of techy, what this is is actually Morse code for the letter H. Four dots represents the letter H in Morse code. Yep, not a lot of people know that. <laughs> All right, now for the climate settings, you'll notice it does have dual zone automatic climate control with varying levels of intensity. And it's all pretty easy to use. It's touch sensitive, but uh, it's all there. Really easy, really intuitive. I've got these climate and warmer buttons here. So if I tap climate, it brings up the climate screen where I have all of the individual customizable settings like um, you know automatic re recirculation, especially when you're using the windshield washer fluid, it's pretty cool. And of course you can change all of your uh, fan speeds and everything from the screen, uh, but you can also use this section here so you can choose which one you want to use now for the heated seats and heated steering wheel if i tap the warmer button here that brings up my heated seat uh, screen so i can actually change and it gives me a cool little graphic there of the uh, the setting for the seats and as well as the heated steering wheel and of course i can turn those off from here as well and i can also see some of the climate control settings up there still all right so let's talk about this screen a little bit now it's a nice big screen. There's lots of real estate here, but what can we do on the screen? Well, for one, we can have a look at the map. Now, there is some hard buttons down here that you can access some of these things really quickly with. Uh, so the map button takes us to the entire map screen. Now, you can actually have the map screen fill up the entire section here if we just hit this little arrow. So now it's a full 12.63 inches of just map. Um, and of course you can put that in a night mode as well. If I hit the media button on here, it brings up our uh, radio real quick. And again, I can reduce the size of the screen to have the map on the other side. So now if I switch to map again, it basically just switches the two around. And I can also cycle through different things on this side, which is pretty cool. So I can have the map up twice for some silly reason, or I can have the battery information. I can have the time come up. I can have the compass. By the way, I did figure out that this is in Indeed, the standard range version, not the long range version. Uh, weather will work once we have the uh, Blue Link set up. And of course, back to the stereo. So lots of great information right up on the screen. I've got a home button up in the top left hand corner, and that brings us back to the main uh, home screen, of course. Um, here we've got three different options that we can look at. We can either have sort of the map with the, uh, the current range and the battery uh, level estimate and a little bit of uh, station estimate down or station information down here in the clock in the top right, or I can have access to all of the menu functions, including uh, the EV screen. So let's go into the EV screen. Now this one I haven't actually looked at yet, <laughs> so I'm kind of learning as I go here as well. Uh, but you'll notice we've got the range till empty, which is pretty cool. Um, our nearest charging station, which is the uh, the Merton uh, GM that's close by here. So they've actually got a quick charging station. So it's, it's showing me that, but it's not showing the charging station that's here on this building because it's not a quick charging station. So it's pretty cool. Uh, they actually give us the option there. From here, we also see EV charge transfer vehicle to load. So let's hit that button here. Okay, pretty cool. So you can actually set the maximum amount of charge uh, that's left over if you're using the vehicle to load adapter. Now this vehicle doesn't come with that, you have to buy that separately, but basically it's a plug that goes into the charging port on the outside and then gives you a 110 volt power outlet that you can use for, oh, a microwave, a refrigerator, whatever. But as you're using it, you can discharge down to a specific level. So if you don't wanna accidentally use too much battery, you can have it shut off once, the, once your battery gets to a certain level. That's pretty cool. All right, let's back out of there and have a look at some of the other stuff in here. So scheduled charging and climate, um, what that allows you to do, you can set the next departure. You can actually have the car uh, pre-warm the battery as well, or pre-cool, as well as the interior um, on a specific time of day, any day of the week, and you can do that for two different times of the day or two different sets of days of the week. So you basically just put little check marks in here. So assuming your vehicle is plugged in, uh, it'll actually get to uh, interior cabin temperature will be set, to, uh, whatever you have the climate control set to, and then it'll get the battery to that uh, proper sort of sweet spot as far as temperature goes 
at that time of day using grid power so that you're not wasting battery power to do it. Pretty smart, uh, really, really cool feature. In the menu here, we've got um, the ability to quickly turn the display off. We can go to Eco Driving Screen, so let's go to that. Just gives us a history of how the vehicle has been driven. Um, sorry, I'm trying to look at the screen through my phone, so I apologize if it looks like I'm, you know, not tapping the right spots. Um, <laughs> we got the split screen here, so you can quickly bring up that other side without actually, actually reaching over to that button. Kind of weird, but whatever. And you also have the user manual here. Uh, which you can then scan with your phone to bring up a digital version of the user manual. Also in the home screen, we have access to the nav menu, which is where you can actually add in addresses, favorites, that sort of thing. The, home, uh, the phone screen, which takes you to where you can dial a phone number uh, or search through your contacts. Of course, you can just use voice recognition for that as well. Uh, your phone projection is your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, voice memo, where you can store a memo, uh, recorded memo. Climate, we already showed you. Warmer, we already showed you. And then we got valet mode, which works with Blue Link. It basically restricts features so that a valet can park your vehicle for you. Quiet mode, which limits the volume in the front speakers, but also completely disables the rear speakers. So that's great if you have a child sleeping in the back. HD radio data, where it pulls data from FM stations, such as traffic and, uh, and Doppler radar. So there's all the traffic in my area. And then Doppler radar, which currently isn't working just because there's no data coming from the station that we're on. Um, and then we have over on the next screen here, we have our, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention we have the setup there, which I'll get to in a bit, uh, which has quick access to the radio, uh, media playback, Blue Link options, notifications, part of Blue Link, and then that user manual again. So in the setup, uh, so let's go back to setup. That is where we can change things. For instance, our vehicle settings, which is, let's start with driver assistance. So driver convenience, highway driving assist, highway auto speed change, as it detects that there's a corner coming up, it'll use the navigation system to do so and slow down the vehicle if you're on uh, cruise control. You can have speed limit warnings come up, interesting. Um, let's see here, warning timing, so that's just how quickly it warns you if there's a, a car uh, stopped in front of you. Uh, you can change the volume of that, forward safety, active assist, or you can just have warnings. Lane safety assist, so actually steer uh, around corners and within lanes. Um, blind spot safety, active assist as well. So if you start to drift over your lane into another oncoming or into another vehicle that's in your blind spot, it'll correct and put you back into your lane as well. Parking safety, so rear cross traffic alert, just like any other rear cross traffic alert system, no difference there. And then you can change the backup camera settings here. You can actually have uh, the guidance lines or not, and you can change the brightness and contrast, etc. Now, let's have a look at the backup camera real quick while we are talking about it. So there is our backup camera, and you'll notice we've got uh, the backup sensor information coming up as well. Backup camera is a beautiful clear image with dynamic steering lines, of course, as you turn the steering wheel. And we also have back to the settings there. And with this icon, you can change it to a top down view. So that gives you a straight down view over the rear bumper. And again, you still get that dynamic steering line in there as well. Pretty cool. All right, so popping it back into park. Um, other settings in here. Let's go back into setup. So other settings in here to, uh, to know about would be under general, for instance, if you wanna get any of the free updates for the vehicle. Now it's free updates on the maps for life as far as I'm aware, I don't think they've changed that at all, but you can also change things like your units here. So you can go from Imperial to metric and vice versa. Uh, you can change the keyword language, date and time, that sort of thing. That's all in the general section of the setup. Um, this is also where you can connect up phones. So that's the device connections. So if you wanna connect the phone via Bluetooth, uh, and you can change the layout of the screen here as well. So you can have uh, uh, black uh, backgrounds and such as well. So we're gonna do that I'm gonna turn that on and see what that looks like. There we go, and everything's black. And then the screensaver, you can enable the digital clock or analog clock. And that's just for when you turn off the screen. Uh, you can also enable and disable what is capable of splitting screen. Um, so to shut the screen off to see the screensaver, you just hold down the power button and you can see now we have a clock. Now, one thing I'd like to point out with the stereo is you do still have a volume knob, which is kind of nice, and a tuning, well, it's not a knob, but it's like a little up and down sort of rocker switch for the tuner. Uh, so nice to have hard buttons for those two things. 
I just wanted to point out, it does have sliding side visors on both passenger and driver side. They both have lights and they both have mirrors. And then up here, we've got the buttons for Blue Link. So you got your SOS button, nice red button there for emergencies. And then you've got your roadside assistance button here. Uh, you can also turn on the interior lights by pressing that button or have them come on when the doors open. Now with the Blue Link system, it's free Blue Link for three years. Um, Blue Link allows you to remotely start the vehicle from your cell phone, unlock the doors, find the, find the vehicle on a map, that sort of thing. But also if you get into an accident, if the airbags deploy, it'll also automatically call uh, emergency services for you right away. And then lastly, before we go for the drive, let's go through some of the screens on the instrument cluster. All right, so using these two buttons, I'm actually gonna cycle through the different screens here. So first off, we have our attention level, which actually just determines whether or not we're getting tired based on how long the car's been on and whether we're staying in our lane or if the car is having to correct for us a lot. And then underneath that, we have our lane keep assist screen. So that's just going to show you uh, if you're drifting out of your lanes, but it's also going to show you adaptive cruise information. And you'll notice it says hold OK for settings. So if I hold this button down now, that'll take us straight into the settings screen on this side. So that's where we, we were looking at earlier with the drive settings, the highway driving assist and stuff. So you can quickly get there by holding that OK button down when you're looking at this screen. So next button or next uh, screen over is our drive info. So this of course is like your trip computer. So we've got uh, accumulated drive info. This is after the last recharge and then, uh, or sorry, this is the trip computer after last recharge and then accumulated info, which we can also reset by holding down that OK button. So we'll do that on all of these screens real quick. This one we can't. So this is actually more of the accumulated actually now that I think about it. All right, jumping over one, we've got uh, our compass. Now this will change to um, turn by turn directions when we're navigating. And then we got our tire pressure monitor on this screen as well. Now, keep in mind all of the settings that we would have seen in older Hyundai vehicles, those are now gonna be on the center screen, not in the instrument cluster. So the center screen will be a little easier to navigate through all those settings. So that's why that's there. Okay, now that we've gone over all the features, let's take this for a drive, see what it's like on the highway and uh, see what it's like around some corners. All right, so driving the Ionic 5. So first thing I noticed right off the bat, this thing is quiet. Like it's definitely got better sound deadening than the uh, the Kona and the old Ionic. And uh, yeah, definitely a little bit more power as well. Now this being the shorter range version uh, and the rear wheel drive isn't, you know, the most powerful one. It's, it does zero to 60 miles an hour in about seven and a half seconds. Um, of course, the all wheel drive one will have a, a much quicker zero to 60, about five and a half seconds. Um, but it's still pretty peppy. And I think we'll, um, I think what we'll do is we'll try the eye pedal right away. So you'll be able to see that now on the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. I've got it in eye pedal and I'm taking my foot off the accelerator. Let's see if I have to come to a stop here. All right, so yeah, we came to a stop and I didn't touch the brake at all. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, steering assist is, is not going to have a very easy time right now just because of all the snow on the side of the road and whatnot. So I'm not really going to be able to test it out as well as I'd like to. But you can see the steering assist come up on the screen here. Now it's green. So whenever it's green, that means it's able to see the lines on the road successfully, even at lower speeds. So here we are just crawling along at three, four, five kilometers an hour. I've come to a stop and it's still recognized where the lines are using that forward facing camera. So the screen that I have on there right now is the tire pressure monitor. I'm going to go ahead and change that uh, to the lane keep assist screen and see what it says, because of course we do also have cruise control. So as soon as these vehicles start to go, we're going to let the, uh, the cruise control kind of figure things out for us. I also wanted to test the leading vehicle departure alerts. So let's see if that works. Yeah, this person by, oh, there it is. So leading vehicle is driving away. So because I didn't start moving when he started moving, I got a warning saying, hey, that car is moving, you can go. That's pretty cool. All right, let's try out the adaptive cruise. And we'll speed it up here a little bit to stay behind the car in front of us. All right, so now you can see right here, we have different levels of adaptive cruise. So right now we're at the closest, the closest, the closest setting. And if I adjust that now, now that'd be the farthest setting. And then of course I can press that same button on the steering wheel to increase or decrease how far we travel behind the vehicle in front of us. It's having a little trouble seeing the lane right now, just because of all the snow on the side of the road. 
Um, but of course the adaptive cruise control still works. That just works at any time. Unless there's a lot of snow and rain, in which case it can't see because uh, the sensors are blinded. So now, <laughs> of course, because this vehicle is rear wheel drive, it means you can do this. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and try a different drive mode. So currently we're in, we were in normal. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put it into sport mode here. You can see, as I mentioned before, you get this really cool looking uh, instrument cluster. Now, one thing I wanted to try was to, I wanted to, to completely disable the regenerative braking. There we go. And then I wanted to see if it actually regenerated. So if you notice on the right hand side here, if I hit the brake pedal now, so it is regenerating a little tiny bit, but not as much as it would in a higher trim level. So it's definitely using more brake pad than our older Ionic and uh, Kona EVs. So I'm slowing down quite a bit. And I'm not really getting a lot of regen. So if I go ahead and put it into, let's see, let's put it into uh, eco mode here. And now we'll have a look at that same screen and see what it does. Wow, the uh, steering assist is really working well here. Okay, so now I've got it back into eco mode. And if we look at the screen here and I let go of the accelerator and hit the brake, yeah, I get a little bit of regen, not much, but in level zero, regardless of what drive mode we're in, regen is all but disabled in level zero, even with the brake pedal being pressed. Uh, that, that's interesting. So the older Ionic and the Kona EV, with the system in level zero, when you hit the brake, it actually used as much regen as possible and then used the brake pads. This one doesn't do that. So you have to have it in at least level one. And then if I slow down, let me try this again here. I was going to speed up a bit. I'm going to slow down. That's where it is just letting go of the accelerator. Now, if I hit the brake, yes, I get full regen hitting the brake. So it's changed the way that they've uh, done regeneration, which is interesting. So that's actually a good thing because now if you want to clean your brake rotors off, um, because the brake rotors on an EV tend to get pretty rusty because they're not being used very often. But now you can actually just put it in level zero um, and it'll do that for you. It'll clean them off when you hit the brakes. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I've switched it over to sport mode now. I can definitely feel the steering is a little tighter and we have, yes, a heck of a lot more acceleration. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna jump onto the freeway here in a moment and we'll see how quickly it gets up to 100. All right, so we're turning on to the freeway and right now we're going 30 kilometers an hour and 27, 30, I'm gonna gun it. So from a rolling 30 going slightly down a hill, there, we're at 100. <laughs> so not really a zero to 100 test there, uh, but just to give you an idea of how quickly it gets up to speed, that was not bad. So low end from that 30 to 60 kilometers an hour or so, it was really quick. And then as it got up over the 60, 70 kilometer an hour range, it started to taper off. You could feel the power sort of uh, start to, to dissipate. All right, so let's try the uh, adaptive cruise here. And we're gonna use the up and down button here to adjust the speed. So you'll notice when I hit the 100 kilometer an hour mark right here on the adaptive cruise, it immediately turned green. And the reason for that is because it knows that the speed limit here is actually 100. Uh, so if I go above that now, it turns white, see? Go down to 100, turns green, a little lower, turns white. And I could, at this point, I mean, it's using the highway drive assist, so it's actually really, really good at keeping itself in the lanes. Um, it's actually using, I think it's using the car in front of us as well as the lines though, because when that car exited the freeway, I saw the steering wheel kind of go to the right a tiny bit. And I think when it realized that that car was leaving, it kind of corrected and went back to the center. So it looks like Hyundai's uh, highway drive assist has gotten a little bit better. It's not only looking at the lines, but it might actually be anticipating corners based on the vehicle in front of it as well. That's pretty interesting. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing on the drive here, we've gotten off the freeway now, and I'm noticing that the rear window I mean, it's pretty fogged up. So I've, I've turned on the rear defrost and you can see it's starting to clear up, but I am kind of wishing it had a wiper. <laughs> so as much as Hyundai would like to say that, you know, it doesn't really need a wiper. Well, it kind of does. All right. So coming to the end of the drive here, I got to say, yeah, it, it's quiet. It's comfortable. It hits, you know, it's you, the bumps that you're hitting, you barely notice they're, they're really, really smoothed out by the suspension. 
Uh, and this is, again, this is the smaller battery and not the all-wheel drive, so it doesn't weigh as much as the top trims. So those are still actually gonna ride even nicer uh, mind you, they've got the, the larger diameter rim, so maybe not, but I guess we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I gotta say, it's a nice, quiet, comfortable, smooth ride. And there we go. So, how would I rate this vehicle? Well, so far, of all the EVs I've driven, and I've driven a lot, this is by far the best. <laughs> it is awesome. It drives nice. It's, it's, well, I already mentioned it. it's smooth, it's comfortable, it's quiet in here. It's one thing that, that actually took me by surprise is just how quiet this ride is. Um, and, you know, everything's easily accessible. All the buttons are in the right place. Um, you know, all the controls are, are, are intuitive. Uh, you know, I sell Hyundais for a living, so I'm going to be a little bit biased. But at the same time, you know, I don't know, the only other vehicle that I would put close to this as far as ride quality and, and, and how it drives and, and the, you know, how fun it is to get in and pilot around so far would be that Tesla Model 3 that I reviewed a while back. That was a great car. Um, you know, Hyundai does a great job on its EVs prior to this too. Like the Ionic, the old Ionic, I, I own it. I love it. Uh, the Kona, it's pretty good as well. I couldn't drive the Kona personally. It's, it's a bit too small for me. It's, um, I, I could drive it, but I couldn't own it. Uh, this, on the other hand, this could be my next vehicle. Like I, I like it that much. Um, I honestly, I would wait for the ultimate trim. Um, but even in this preferred trim, it's well equipped and it's comfortable. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Thank you so much for getting this far guys. I know this was a longer video, uh, but if it helped you out at all, uh, if it uh, potentially helped make a uh, decision for you or, you know, helped you out with some of the controls and features in the vehicle, uh, please, please hit like, hit subscribe, comment below, hit the bell icon, do all those things if it, you know, is if, if it's all the same to you, because it really helps me out um, and it helps grow my channel. So thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for future videos. Have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year.